Hi there. I'd like to talk to you today about graphs and circles, two of your favorite things, I'm sure. And quite simply, the goal here is that you're going to learn to write the equation of a circle using its graph. And really, we'll learn to do the converse. We'll learn to graph a circle um, using its equation. So what does the equation of a circle look like? That's what you're going to learn from this video. And then how can you use that to graph circles and answer general questions about circles? in the coordinate plane. Now what I'd like to do first is just kind of demonstrate to you where the equation of a circle comes from in a sense. I guess I'm really getting to that later on. But what I'm doing right now, I suppose, is I'm comparing the equation of a circle to other similar equations that you've worked with before. All right? It turns out the equation for a circle is a quadratic equation, um, a quadratic relation a circle can be classified as. And you're used to working with quadratics a little bit. Uh, for instance, you know if you have the equation y equals x to the second power, that you get a parabola like so, right? So whenever it's an x that's getting squared, you get a parabola. So you might say, well, what if I make the y squared and not the x and have an equation like x is equal to y to the second power? Well, Turns out that gives you a parabola as well, and though you might not have worked with this parabola yet, it's just a sideways opening parabola if it's the y that's squared instead of the x. Well, so what we're getting ready to get into is a situation where both the x and the y are squared. So x squared, and let's go plus y squared, is equal to, say, 16. All right? Did you see how that gave you the graph of a circle? There you go. So, a circle's equation is simply a quadratic relation. It's not a quadratic function. Actually, of the three graphs that we've made, only y equals x squared passes a vertical line test. Um, so these other two are just quadratic relations, not functions. But, nevertheless, it is a quadratic relation. Now, you might say, okay, so the secret to making a circle is just squaring the x and the y. Well, it turns out you can do that and get other shapes as well. So just for the demonstration shake, uh, sake, I'll show you that. Um, if you had x squared, say minus y squared is equal to 16, you get a totally different shape. Now, maybe you can see the purple right there. These two branches fit together for that graph. That's what's called a hyperbola. All right, but really the thing I want you to take away from here is that the equation of a circle is going to be a quadratic relation in which you have an x squared plus a y squared, essentially. Okay? Very good. Now, let me more formally derive the equation for a circle for you. So, here's where the equation of a circle actually comes from, then. Um, if you think about the definition of a circle, it's the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from a fixed point, uh, which would be the center of the circle. And so what I would like to do is be able to make a relation between that fixed point, the center of the circle, and all the other points that are on the circle. Now, the relationship between any of those points and the center is that each of those points on the circle is the same distance from the center as any other point. And so the easiest relation we can make between the center and one random point, which I'm just calling x, y, is to show how far this point is, or any of those points are, from the center. Now I'm trusting that you know how to find the distance between two points on a coordinate plane. There's a formula called the distance formula for that, in which we would say that the distance, which in this case is going to be the radius, because the distance from the center to a point on the circle is a radius, um, is equal to the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared, which in this case, um, if I find the difference in the x coordinates, that would be x minus h. So I'd have an x minus h squared. And then plus the difference in the y coordinate squared. So that would be y minus k squared. All right, so that's if you knew a, the center of a circle and you know a point on the circle, that's how you could determine what the radius of the circle is. And then it turns out you can make that very easily into the equation of a circle. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to make it so that this equation no longer has a square root in it. So we're going to square both sides of the equation. And so that becomes this, r squared equals x minus h squared plus 
y minus k squared. And right there, you have the standard equation of a circle. Now I'm going to do a couple things with that real quick, just to um, add a little bit to your knowledge, and uh, then we'll move on to how you use that equation. Suppose you had a circle whose center was the origin, or in other words, where h and k were both zero, then the equation of the circle would look like this. It would just be x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. You might recall that I graphed the equation x squared plus y squared equals 16 a little bit ago, and it gave us a circle who was centered at the origin and whose radius was 4. Okay, And then if the center is not at the origin, but rather at a point h, k, like I showed you over here, then the equation becomes what I wrote above. All I've done is change it so that the x's and y's are on the left side of the equation and the radius is on the right side of the equation. All right. So, two things you need to know about a circle to write its equation and thus graph the circle. You have to know where is the center, all right, what are the coordinates of the h and k, and you have to know what the radius of the circle is. With those two things in hand, you can write the equation of any circle as well as graph any circle. All right, now let's answer some questions regarding a circle's equation and its graph. Here's an example of a couple of problems that are very common along with equations of circles. These are the most basic questions you can get, um, where it is telling you in the first one to write the equation of a circle given the center and the radius. And the second one is if you have the equation of the circle to identify the radius and the center of the circle. All right, well, if you're given the center and the radius, then you know your values of h and k. h would be negative 3, k would be 1. And you know the radius. So, you have everything you need to write the equation of the circle. Now, notice in the equation um, that if I put x minus negative 3, that's the same thing as x plus 3. So, in practice, whenever you're writing the equation, if a coordinate is negative, if the x coordinate is negative, then you're going to put x plus that value. If it was positive, such as the y coordinate is here, then you're going to put y minus that value. Because y minus a positive 1 is y minus 1. So there's the left-hand side of the equation, our x minus h plus our y minus k, each of those squared. All right, And on the opposite side of the equation, we're going to write the radius squared. And you're probably going to write that in simplified form, whether, or where instead of writing 11 squared, you'll just write a 121 like this. doesn't get a whole lot more simple than that, except possibly the next thing that we're doing where you're given the equation of the circle and you're asked to find, as I said earlier, the radius and the center of the circle. Well, let's start with the center, actually, um, because all you have to do is identify the h and a k. And so what's being subtracted from x? Well, what's being subtracted from x is a positive 4, which means our h is positive 4. And you're going to notice that you don't see a y plus or minus anything, and that's because 0 is the value of k for that particular circle. All right? You don't need to write y minus 0 squared because that's the same thing as y squared, right? Okay, and then the radius squared is this value 12 that you see over there. So in order to figure out what the radius is, we simply have to take the square root of that, the positive square root of that. So the positive square root of 12 would be the exact value of the radius. And if you like that in simplified radical form, as I'm sure your teacher probably does, then you're going to write 2 square root of 3. All right, well, now let's write an equation of a circle again, but this time, let's do it when we're looking at the circle itself. We're looking at the graph. We need to be able to identify those two important features. What, or where, excuse me, is the center of the circle located? And I think you can see the center of that circle is right here. Now, if you're paying attention to the scale here, uh, this is 2, comma 1 then, right? So there's your h and your k. So we know that the first part of the equation of the circle would be x minus 2 squared plus y minus 1 squared. All right? And then we've got to figure out the radius. Now, easy enough to figure out the radius if you know where the center is. All you have to do is count any of four directions. You can see how far it is directly to the right, directly up, directly left, or directly down from the center of the circle. Don't try these diagonal distances, then you have to use a distance formula. Okay? 
but very easy otherwise. And so let's just say I go off to the left. Why not? So this would be one unit because every little grid line is a half unit. That's one, two, three, four. Radius is four. So the radius squared would be 16. Super easy, right? And we'll finish up with how do you actually make the graph of a circle yourself. And so we're going to graph the circle given by the equation that you see there. And two things we need to do to begin that process. Let's identify the center of the circle. And I think you can see that the center of that circle is going to be at 2, negative 4. And then let's figure out what the radius is. Since the radius squared is 9, that means the radius is going to be 3. All right, and now in terms of graphing, let's go ahead and graph the center first at 2, negative 4. And notice I did change the intervals on the x and y axis since the last graph. We're going by 1's this time, because you see where the 5 is, instead of going by 1 halves. Alright, and then the next thing is to use the radius. All right. Now, if you have a, a compass handy, that's the most accurate way to make this. Then you could just figure out where is a point that's 3 units away. And you can do that by either going right, or, oh, well that was up I suppose, or right, or down or left three units from the center. So say you go here and then you put the center of your compass on the center of the circle, you put the pencil part on the radius, on the point that's on the circle, and then you just swing your arc all the way around and you'll have a very precise circle that way. All right, but if you're just trying to freehand it, then what I would recommend doing is this. Let's go ahead and place a point, as many points exactly three units away from the center as we can. by Placing one directly above, place one directly to the right, and below, and to the left of the center of the circle, and then just make the best, ooh, that was not very good, make the best circle that you can through those points, okay? Compass is a better idea, but if you don't have a compass, that's kind of what you do. Great. You understand what the equation of a circle looks like and you know how to identify the key features of a circle using that equation and thus to graph a circle. Thank you very much. Good luck with all this stuff in class. See you later.